Therese, what are you making for us today? I'm making a dish called espinaca con garbanzos, which is a beautiful sounding um, uh, dish in Spanish. And in English, it doesn't sound quite as beautiful, but it's just as delicious. Okay. It's um, spinach with chickpeas. Oh, nice. spinach with chickpeas. And where did you come up with this recipe? Well, it's a traditional dish in tapas bars in Spain. And many years ago when I was in, spent some time in southern, southern Spain, every tapas bar that we went to served espinaca con garbanzos. And it's kind of like a thick um, spread or a dip that, um, that they cook up with spinach and lots of yummy garlic, olive oil, really good Spanish flavors and then chickpeas, and they spread it on um, French bread, and they eat it uh, with wine or beer. It's just fabulous. And you say you, some of the ingredients come from the farmer's market? Absolutely. It's, spinach is such a great farmer's market ingredient because um, except for maybe the very hottest months of the summer season, spinach is in season in spring. It's definitely in, uh, in season in fall for the, for the second planting of it. Um, and um, also in winter, you can get uh, spinach from hydroponics and from um, hoop houses in the winter. So it's, I always get the spinach. Uh, most of the yes, other ingredients are, let's see, we have garlic, we have chickpeas, not from the market, but you could substitute dry beans from the market, like a cranberry bean would be fabulous. Oh, in this. okay. You could also substitute um, chard for the spinach also. So, so those ingredients really definitely come from the market. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get going. Okay, we're gonna make espinaca con garbanzos. It's actually in three parts. Um, and I'll just tell you what the three parts are. We're gonna uh, cook some spinach and chop it up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to make a kind of a thickening seasoning paste um, with uh, garlic and bread. And then we're gonna cook everything together, the herbs, the spinach, the chickpeas, um, and the thickening uh, uh, spread uh, together in a fry pan. And then we'll finish it off with some French bread to eat. Take about three quarters of a pound of um, fresh spinach leaves. And this is one where you wouldn't necessarily want the super fine spinach, though you can use the tougher spinach too because you're gonna be cooking it. If it has a little bit of the stems on it, use the stems. They're delicious and they're wonderful in this recipe too. They're, those sweet stems can be just fabulous. You don't need to cut them off, you really don't. Um, you know, maybe if you see a real dry end, but uh, if you're getting it from the farmer's market, that's pretty unlikely they're gonna be super fresh. We're going to put it in a little bit of boiling water, just enough to wilt it, and then we'll chop it up. So let's get over to the stove. And uh, we'll just add all of it in there. So you've got, what, about a half of an inch? Yeah, a half inch water, an inch or so. It won't take much, just enough to create a good amount of steam, and this spinach is gonna cook right down real quickly. So I'll put the lid on, and in about uh, maybe 30 to 60 seconds, uh, give it a stir and it'll all be wilted. Got my spinach. You can see some of the liquid is out of it, squeezed out. Doesn't You don't have to get all of it out. It doesn't have to be super dry. And you just dump that onto the cutting board and we're gonna chop it down fairly finely. But this is a rough chop. It doesn't have to be perfect. The spinach got a gorgeous green color. Yeah, it does, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it will stay nicely. It gets a little bit darker as it cooks. The second step is we're going to make a, a flavored or a garlicky thickening paste. This is going to help thicken the juices later on. Um, and when you think about thickening something, you usually think of thickening it with flour. But this is actually a fairly um, old recipe. Probably comes goes back as far as the medieval ages when they used bread um, for thickening. And oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, what we're going to do is I've got a pan on the stove. Um, and first I'm going to take a couple of garlic cloves. This is a very garlicky dish and I'm just going to take the, um, the skins off and you just do that very simply by smacking the garlic clove with something hard like your knife oh. and the skin comes off very easily. Oh, that's neat. The skin goes in the compost. <laughs> now you don't have to slice or chop this one because we're going to smash it up later with the bread. So I'm just taking off the ends and the spinach is ready to go. And I've got a piece of French bread. It can be a dry piece, or this is actually a fresh piece, um, about a quarter inch or so, half inch or so thick. So, um, and olive oil is the other ingredient for this. So let's go back to the stove. I've got about a tablespoon of oil in the pan and I'm making sure it gets nice and hot. I want it to just sizzle a little bit once you put the garlic and bread in. So there, we got a little bit of a sizzle happening. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna cook it. Um, both are lightly brown. The garlic's going to cook pretty fast. See how that's getting brown there? That's beautiful. And that's just French bread. 
this good old French bread. You can use a, you can use any kind of bread really. Um, uh, whatever you got left, maybe left over or end, an end that you don't want to eat. It's what I like about this kind of recipe. You can play with it. It's not meant to be an exact science. The bread is getting toasted and so is the garlic. We don't want to have too much heat there now that it's getting brown. I think we're just at the right point. Okay, so we take the bread, that nice brown garlic and any little olive oil that's in the pan and get it into a mortar and pestle. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, wine vinegar. You could use white wine, you could use red wine vinegar. I actually have, I think, an apple cider vinegar here, a really nice one since it is um, a Spanish recipe, of course, would be a sherry vinegar, but anyone will work. And I've got, oh, half a teaspoon, a teaspoon or so. Again, not exact science. And then we're going to smash this right in the mortar and pestle until we get it into sort of a, a thick, rough paste. Sounds good. Smells good. <laughs> Looks a little funky. <laughs> smells beautiful. Yeah, it does. It smells great. You want it to the point where there's not too many large garlic pieces. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to make it a little pasty and make it break down even better. And there's our thickening paste. That's step two. That's a nice fruity smelling olive oil. And again, I want to get the pan good and hot. Doesn't have to be super sizzling hot, but enough so that uh, you do hear a little bit of a sizzle. Oh, not quite. <laughs> we'll do that one over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try adding the chickpeas next. Yeah, we're getting a nice sizzle there. We're gonna add some flavors to that. These are Spanish flavors. I'm starting with um, some smoked Spanish paprika. You can also use just a good sweet, or even if you want a hot paprika. Okay. You can add about a teaspoon or so of that. And again, no, uh, I don't see any measuring spoons. Not for this kind of recipe, definitely not. That's part of the fun. I think measuring spoons, spoons would take the fun out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got about a half to a teaspoon um, of oregano, thyme, I like a lot of herbs, rosemary, and of course if you have fresh, go for fresh. And here's my favorite one of all, this is the cumin, so I like a full, full teaspoon of that. Um, I'm going to add a little salt. I'm going to add um, the spinach. Isn't that beautiful? That's gorgeous. <laughs> but he tastes it. And I'm going to put um, our thickening paste in and also add some water. And we're almost done, believe it or not. Wow. I've got, oh, maybe a half a cup of water here. You can always add more if you need to. Let's stir that around. The flavors are going to blend. If you want a little more uh, spiciness, which I do, <laughs> we're going to add a little bit of... Uh, some pepper seasoning. Um, this is actually from out of our gourd, I believe. And that's gonna bring up the spice. And you're gonna let it cook to absorb the liquid and to combine everything. And once that's all together really well, you, um, what I like to do, is turn off the heat and let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes. Hmm. And then you can actually eat it warm or hot at that time. It's also good cold. So I'm still mixing everything in. Um, some people like more spinach, some people like more chickpeas. It's really up to you. That's okay. the espinaca con garbanzos, otherwise known as spinach with chickpeas. Nice French bread from the farmer's market. Lots of places to get that. In Spain, um, you would get it on a small plate, but we're gonna we're going to do a larger plate. When you say tapas, what is that exactly? Tapas basically is a, our appetizers. Um, oh, okay. Um, small plates of things. Uh, and there's a wonderful tradition in Spain. And, um, you know, it's getting very popular. It has become very popular also in the United States of having small plates of many different things. Uh, and what they do in Spain that was just so um, 
social and wonderful and really to me reflects the whole Spanish culture in a way is they'll go um, after work and that's late uh, in the evening usually um, eight or nine o'clock mm -hmm. and um, stop at a tapas bar have a small glass of wine or a, a glass of beer and meet friends and have one or two tapas before um, they head home nice. and it's just a wonderful tradition you can actually make a whole meal out of tapas too yeah nice the ingredients have gotten to know each other a little bit um, the flavors have developed. You can check to see if you like a little more salt or pepper or any of the other seasonings at this point. And then when it gets to the point you like it, just put it right on the plate. Pile it up on the plate. I'll get a spoon or two. And we'll dig in to espinaca con garbanzos. Something really good for spinach. A lot of spinach and a lot of goodness. <laughs>